So this is the second part of a two-part saga of wiring a Easy Digi into my computer and to the radio. So the first part we've already covered the assembly of the Easy Digi. So we have everything put together. If you don't have this yet and you need some help, be sure to click on the video. It'll be on the in the description. So this part we're actually going to be creating the wires that will be running from our sound card on our computer into a radio. So we're going to need a few things for this interface, okay? So you're definitely going to need some wire cutters. You don't have to have anything fancy. As long as you can splice the wires, you're good to go. It's a good idea to have some pliers and some wire cutters. You're also going to need a soldering iron and some solder to solder the wires onto the Easy Digi itself. You're going to need a interface cable for your radio, and this varies. So I'm using the FT450D, so I'm using a 6-pin mini DIN or a keyboard wire. Um, but basically you'll just need the wire for it, and the most important part is to make sure that it's shielded. You want shielded wire to prevent any type of interference going on in the cable. So just look at what kind of data jack your radio has or front panel jack and make sure that you get the appropriate cable for it and it is shielded. The next thing you're going to need is a shielded 3.5 millimeter uh, audio jacks. And these are not the uh, TRRS, these are the TRS. So it's going to have the tip, ring, and sleeve. And you're going to need um, at least two ends. I bought one cable which is also shielded which is important and I'm just going to cut this part off and these are going to be my two wires that are connected to the Easy Digi and then these to the sound card. So if you're confused, don't worry, it's going to make more sense in just a moment. It's a good idea to have an enclosure for the Easy Digi, something metal. Now I ordered this from eBay and it turned out to be way bigger than what I wanted. Um, it'll work, but ideally uh, it's nice to have something this big enough to get your Easy Digi in there. Again, it's good to have something metal to protect from um, the uh, RF. Uh, you don't want any interference going on, so I've ordered this metal case. I'll put a link down below for it in the description just in case that's what you want. You also need a sound card. You can use your computer's you know, onboard sound card if you like. I like to use an external one. I bought this off of eBay for $4. So the link below, uh, there'll be a link below for this one as well. And last but not least, I have a drill so that I can drill holes in the uh, enclosure here to run my wires back and forth. So let's go ahead and get started by stripping our wires down. So I'm going to start by stripping down my uh, six pin mini DIN wire. Now when I bought this I bought a ton of it that way I would have extra to use in case I mess something up or maybe down the road for another project. But I'm going to unwind uh, quite a bit here because I've always had trouble with shorter cables and uh, this is shielded so it should be a problem. So I'm going to clip it probably about right here and <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and just skin the entire wire because I don't know exactly which wires we're going to be using just yet. You might even be able to use uh, like a pair of scissors or something and just start slowly scraping some of it off and if you can break the first surface sometimes you can take your fingernails and uh, pinch the rest off. You may reach a point where you can just take the whole side Take the whole uh, shield and just pull it out. There we go. So we got that out. And I'm going to go ahead and just keep things neat. Going to cut the end of this off here. Now we're going to go ahead and just strip all of these wires. Because we're going to have to test all of them. So once your wires are spliced here, you're going to want to figure out which ones we're going to use. And so to do that, you want to look at the pinout of your specific radio's data or mic jack port. So I'm going to go ahead and show you mine on the screen for the FT450D. And it's going to show exactly which one of these pins go to what. So, what we're going to do here is once we find with the FT450, there's only one ground. So I'm looking for the data in, the data out, and the ground. Now the way we can check which one of these wires relate to what is we can get our multimeter and if we put our multimeter on maybe uh, 20k ohm resistance and we turn it on we can use this to determine 
which cable goes where. So if it's one, that means there's no connection. But if I touch one of these probes to a pin here, say this one right here, and I start touching it to different wires, eventually one of them are going to cause the meter to turn to zero. So let's go ahead and take a look at our pin out and see exactly which uh, pins we're going to need. So as you can see on the screen here, this is a rough drawing of what my data port looks like on my radio. So it could look different from yours, but let's take a look at this. So this is with the perspective of the cable facing down. Uh, see if I can get this to focus. So what we're going to do is test those pins that I have on my drawing with the pins on the other side and see which colors relate to what pin. And once we figure out our data in, data out, and ground, we're just going to go ahead and write those colors down so we don't have to figure that out again. So it's looking like green is actually data out because I touched it to my data out pin <clears throat> and that is the one that is lighting up. So I'm going to go ahead and just write that down, green data out. Now we're going to look for either ground or data in. So I'm going to move on to, let's, let's try the black one again and see which, uh, which pin we get the black one to respond to. If, if it's not any of the three we're looking for, I'm not going to worry about it. And it looks like right off the bat, red one is our ground. I'm going to double check that again just to be sure there's no false positives. And the last one is the end. So we only have two wires left to check, so let's see if we can deduce which one that is. We'll start with the yellow. Not the yellow, so that only leaves one, I believe, which is this, this, this weird odd color. I don't know what to call it, but it looks like it is the data in that we are looking for. It's like a, uh, a dull pink. We'll just call it pink. Dull. I'll call it dull pink so I don't get myself confused here, but this is the one. And that pretty much does it for that wire. So we'll just go ahead and set up the audio wires that are going to our PC. Our shielded audio cable. And here really what we care about uh, is the tip connector and the sleeve. So this, the tip is going to be our positive, the sleeve is going to be our ground. So we're going to use this, but we need to go ahead and cut it in half because I need both connectors here. So we're just going to snap that in half and we just have to figure out the colors on one, okay? But we're going to have to splice both of them. So let's go ahead and just get the, this cable here spliced. So. Pretty simple process. We're going to snip off the rubber here like we did before. So that's off and we're going to go ahead and see what is going where here. So remember, the only thing we care about is the tip and the sleeve. So we're going to connect one end to our probe. And again, we'll use the helping hand because why not. And let's try the, uh, let's try the red one first because I'm pretty sure it's the tip. And it's actually not the tip. It's actually the ring. The, the middle part we don't care about. Let's try the black one. So the black one it looks like it is the tip. Yeah, so the black one is the tip. So that would probably leave the shielded one as the ground. Yep. So black's the tip. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to chop that red one off here so we don't get confused. So now we're going to drill some holes here in a project box. So on one end we need a hole big enough to fit this cable in and on the other end we need a hole um, big enough to either fit both of these cables in like two or maybe just one. We'll see here in a second. Alright so this is my first time drilling something ever. So this is going to be fun for me. As fun as it is for you all to watch. So I've decided to go ahead and for the first one, I'm going to drill the hole for the radio uh, cable. It's just thicker. Maybe it'll be a little simpler. Uh, I'm using the biggest drill bit that came with my kit. 
If it's not big enough, I guess I can just try to widen it up some. Yeah, I need a workbench. I think it'll work. So we're all wired up here, and I'm gonna show you the back side first. So these are the wires coming in. You're gonna notice that those top two here are bound together, that's my ground. My radio only has one ground for the input and output, so those gonna be bridged together. And for the other side here, this is what we got going on. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. So obviously the pink one goes to mic in, the green one is going to audio in or RX audio, and then the red one we have going up to the ground and it's bridged over to the other ground. So let's go ahead and get this thing soldered on. Yeah, let's make sure we're ready to run here. Yeah. Yeah, let's get some on my desk there. Alright, let's get this thing soldered up. I think I'm pretty satisfied with that job there. None of those wires are going anywhere. And that's what it looks like right there. So we can go ahead and clip these leads off and uh, we can go ahead and solder these wires on now. Alright, so now we've got our outputs to our sound card fixed up here and we have the two neutral or the two grounds uh, there in the middle and our two positives on each side so this one's going to be uh, speaker in mic out or either one so those are actually ready to solder so let's get those cables on there and here's what it looks like on the other side so you know All right, so let's get this last part soldered up here. I think I've got enough solder left to finish up. Just wanna make sure those are some good connections. And Pretty much finishes those up. And let's get these leads clipped off. Before it's all said and done here, before we wrap everything up, I'm going to hook it in to the computer and let's just make sure that it doesn't blow up and we get the right audio and see if we can make a uh, an FTA contact. All right, so that pretty much sums up this little saga, and here is the finished product. Now, this zip tie here is actually around to keep the wires in place. Uh, until I find a better solution, I'll need to just fill these holes or something just to mount the wire so the easy digi inside won't slide around. It is insulated though, and it looks like it's working pretty well. So, super excited to get to finally use this, um, and I'm super excited to give five of these out here once I get to 5,000 subscribers. Anyways, it was a cool project to do. I recommend it for any anybody uh, beginning wanting to get into electronics or soldering and stuff like that. It wasn't too difficult. So thanks for watching and remember to subscribe. Comment below what kind of other uh, stuff you'd like to see, some, uh, project builds and stuff like that. And send me three to you.